Hello viewers, this is Paladin of Odin, and this is some more Magic the Gathering Online. This is another episode of the Standard Commentary Series, and we've got Green Red Werewolves versus, I want to guess, uh, 4C Cryptolith Rites, but I don't really have any evidence to suggest that other than the fact that he has three colors. Now, both sides had a Duskwatch Recruiter... <laughs> He had a Breakneck Rider. No spells were cast last turn, so all the werewolves flip. And Red Green is going straight into combat. Now, he does have Neckbreaker, which uh, turns all of his creatures plus one, plus zero, and trample when they're attacking. All right, the other side is responding. Ultimate Price, Grasp of Darkness. Either one would be just fine. All right, there's ultimate price on Neckbreaker. So, depowers the Crawlin Horde Howler down to 3-3, but I highly doubt that uh, he's going to block. I mean, it would be a straight-up trade, but... Honestly, this is better for him on the board. Though, I have to admit, having a Duskwatch recruiter would probably be a little more helpful to him right here. But we don't know what is, what's in his hand. You know, being able to cast creatures for uh, one less mana is going to be helpful. Tireless Tracker. If he held back a land so that he could get a clue token from the Tireless Tracker, he could play another three casting cost creature. He did. Does he have another creature, or is he going to hold back his mana to respond on... Nope, he's going for it. Throwing down a morph. So, quite the collection for werewolves to have to break through. And Werewolves is currently pretty low on cards. And doesn't have a whole lot to show for what he's done. Getting a little aggressive on the other side. He's sending in his Werewolf, so that'll be three damage. Oh, Werewolves is responding with Collected Company. And that's the great thing about Werewolves. There are a lot of good creatures... With converted mana cost three or less. Gets a breakneck rider and a breakneck rider. So honestly, I would just take the three damage here. Since uh, these guys are going to be much more powerful if he can get them to flip. And now the werewolves transform back into Duskwatch Recruiters. And I have to say, if he doesn't have anything better to do, Duskwatch Recruiters' ability is actually really helpful for him. Lamholt Pacifist. That is one of the problems with fast aggro decks like this, is they run out of cards really fast. And Duskwatch Recruiters... Recruiter's ability is really good for a deck like this, especially considering, you know, three mana isn't a whole lot. So, all-out attack. He does have the three mana open, so he could be holding that enchantment that gives all werewolves plus one, plus one, and trample. Because it has flash. And it doesn't look like he's going to block. That's 8 damage. Ah, Howl Pack Resurgence. I couldn't remember the name. But uh, he had the trump card in his hand waiting for him to block. But since he didn't block, why not throw it out and add another 3 damage? That's 11 damage.
honestly, at this point, I think his best course of action would be a, be to play something like a Languish to clear the board, considering Werewolves has nothing after that. I mean, well, they have that. But they're, they're top-decking now. So if you could clear the board, you would just nuke all of his progress. I mean, you'd lose your creatures too, but you have the advantage of having more cards. Okay, Evolving Wilds getting him clue tokens. He is sacrificing a clue token to draw a card. For his sake, I hope that he has something like an ultimate price. Flipping Den Protector. That'll get him back the ultimate price, but uh, that isn't going to save him from this damage. All of these guys have Trample. It doesn't matter how he blocks, he can't block enough to live. So that's the first game, Werewolves wins. Still don't know what the other guy's playing for certain. Hopefully we will get confirmation in the next game. Okay, turn two, Duskwatch Recruiter from, we'll call him Wrights. Uh, werewolves had to mulligan down to five cards, which really hurts a deck like this. Oh, second turn, Duskwatch Recruiter from him as well. And that's the thing about werewolves, is they are fully capable of dropping uh, a card first, second, third, and fourth turn in sequence of mana. Oh, attacking in with the Duskwatch Recruiter. I was thinking maybe block there to trade, but this is much more important to werewolves than to uh, the other side. Because at the very least... Now he can use his ability and start uh, trying to find more creatures to play. Ooh, this is a ballsy attack. 2-2 two, two into the Sylvan Advocate, but you know that he has some kind of a, a trick. He wouldn't bluff at this stage. All right, Howl Pack Resurgence. So that'll get rid of the Sylvan Advocate. And that's something that I was thinking about, and I've heard... Other play players talk about it too with werewolves, why it's not really top tier playable in standard right now is because it doesn't have a quality lord. I mean, Halpak Resurgence has the effect of a lord, but it's not a creature. And that's kind of a big deal. I mean, take a look at White Weenie, for example. Thalia's Lieutenant isn't a traditional lord, you know, a creature that has such and such creature type gets plus one plus one it you know puts plus one plus one counter on creatures of a such and such type when it comes into play but it's a pseudo lord but it works really well but uh werewolves kind of just has to rely on things like this and most of the time it's just not good enough Gyre Reach Bandit from Werewolves. Other side is responding with Grasp of Darkness on the Crawling Horde Howler. So, still four damage. But he did lose the casting cost reduction or the creature fetch, which... Both are very helpful to a fast, aggressive deck like Werewolves. Three mana. The problem with a matchup like this, though, for Werewolves is the fact that basically all Werewolves is is Brute Strength. If you're facing off against a deck that has the ability to directly kill creatures. You know, Grasp of Darkness Ultimate Price are really good against decks like this because most of these creatures never hit four toughness, and they're pretty much all single color. So it's just 
straight up, I kill your creature. It doesn't matter how good the creature is, it's dead. And there's not really anything that, that werewolves can do about it. But Double Sylvan Advocate from the other side flips the recruiter back. Hermit of Natternoles. Hmm. Don't see many people play with this card, mainly because, you know, when an opponent casts a spell during your turn draw card, you know, not that not that bad. But you know, he could just as easily play this on his own turn, you know. And in a situation like this, you know, for example, if he has another Grasp of Darkness, and if he had the mana open, he wouldn't really lose all that much tempo doing it on his own turn to avoid giving the werewolves an extra card. But it looks like they're both running into mana problems, which is good news for werewolves, because their top mana cost is around four. So he's only one mana short of that. So it works in his favor that they're both running into mana troubles because uh, the more stuff that uh, Werewolves draws that isn't land, the better, so that he can keep filling out the board. And the longer his opponent keeps being mana screwed is even better for him because, well, he's mana screwed. And there's ultimate price. And like I said, even if uh, Werewolves was untapped, there would have been nothing that he could do to save that. And he played it on his own turn to avoid giving him a card, and he really didn't lose anything. I mean, granted, he still couldn't attack, but at the same time, in this situation, the other side is kind of in the same situation. I mean, he could attack in with his 3-4 Trample, but then he'd be losing his possible draws, and undoubtedly he would just double block with the Sylvan Advocates, and it would just be a one-creature trade. So, Werewolves doesn't attack. But now he has Keswick Forge Master, which, if he can flip it, would be a pretty powerful attacker, considering these guys are so small right now. Mana. Ruinous Path on the Hermit. And there's another really good creature kill card that is just amazing against a deck like Werewolves. All Out Attack. Kessig's Forge Master is a two toughness, so it doesn't matter what he would block, Forge Master's going to die. So he's going for the Duskwatch Recruiter, which deals one extra, you know, deals the one damage. Unfortunately, it's not transformed. Otherwise, that would have been a kill straight out on the Duskwatch Recruiter, and he would have kept his uh, Werewolf. He takes four damage from the Sylvan Advocates, though. He's down to nine. Oh, and um, no plays. Four cards in hand, three mana. And I'm afraid that's pretty much it for werewolves this game. In come the Sylvan Advocates for four more damage. Werewolves is down to five. And again, uh, werewolves is only two colors. I was thinking, you know, Radiant Flames for three would solve his problems, but he can't do it for three. He doesn't have the third color. Breakneck Rider. So now he has a four blocker, but the problem is, is that he only has one blocker, and ultimate price kills it. I was going to say, he even if he didn't have that, three attackers versus one blocker, he blocks the biggest creature, and he still dies. Well, wait a minute. Three, two, if he blocks him, that two, four. No, he would have lived with, with one, but he was pretty much screwed anyway. But uh, I'm going to end the video there. Unfortunately, that game was a loss for the Werewolves deck. Just didn't run very well that time. But uh, 
we also didn't get to see exactly what the other guy was playing, so I'm just going to have to assume that it was 4C Cryptolith. Or it could just be Golgari. I, I think I'll go with Golgari. So anyway, sorry for rambling. That was Golgari versus Red Green Werewolves. And if you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button for me. And I'll see you in the next video.